Greetings my esteemed audience. I'm checking in from a beautiful Hyperborea, frozen Hyperborea. I'm checking in from the cold with a few insights that will perhaps be useful to you. I don't know. I will say the following as a disclaimer that there are of course men who are more knowledgeable about this topic than I am because my own two beloved girls, my own two beloved cuddle princesses, they are still quite small so I approach this more from the perspective of a humble philosopher. So anyway, before I get into the topic at hand, we have a message from the sponsor of this video. I'm sponsoring myself. Absolutely aesthetic. Have you ever seen such a fine garment? So we have had a great release of merino wool garments from Lithuania with love over at legiogloria.com. Do check it out. I am supremely happy and proud to present this fine garments and this fine scarf for sensitive poets. So do check it out and also be sure to observe and admire my personal best air in the overhead press. So we have five repetitions at 80 kilos. You see me driving through there so I can reforge myself into becoming an avatar of Atlas so I can be strong enough to hold the world on my shoulders. So great stuff. Do check it out. First link in the description box below. Now on to the matter at hand. The first question we need to ask ourselves as fathers of daughters is of course what do we want for our daughters? Happiness. Simply put, happiness, security for them and their children. And in my humble view at least this is again I'm just looking at the world around me and I draw conclusions, I recognize patterns and I see that the, the women who are happy are the women who have found a good man and who have children. There are women who can't have children, they can pursue a different path, that's a different topic. Now we're talking about, you know, in most in most cases it's possible for a woman to to have children, to find a man and uh, yeah, create a family. And I'd say that is the, the heroic path for a woman, to find a good man with potential. The man doesn't need to be perfect when they find each other, but you need to see that potential in the man and then bring out the best in him and then they create a family together, grow together as a, as a loving couple. So for a man, I will make a video on this later on, for a man you have your own path in front of you, your own determination and that determination, it's more of a metaphysical quality in a man, I've talked about it before, that will make you attractive to women, that you have that firm goal at hand that you strive towards. So for a man the goal is something else, but for the woman the goal is to find a good man. Now then, as a father, your role, my role, as I view it at least, is to be a good point of reference. A good point of reference as what a good man is. Because if I may be so bold to flatter myself and say that I'm a good man, I'm a good, dependable, decent man. So what I do is what my girls will look to. Okay, this is how a man is supposed to behave, think, speak, uh, treat others, etc. And they will most likely, and this is something you can observe, again, pattern recognition, you can see that women usually tend to end up with men who resemble um, their father, uh, or, you know, who, who act the same, or, um, yeah, who are similar in, in certain ways. And this also leads us to the to the tragedy of many things and that is of course women who grew up without a father and they if you look at bad life outcomes both for men and women it's usually often the case that single motherhood is is not good at all so if we know that a single motherhood child is more likely to be for a man engaged in criminal activities uh, you can look at studies showing this. A boy growing up without a father more likely to engage in criminal behavior. A woman growing up without a father more likely to engage in promiscuous behavior. And criminality for a man and promiscuity for a woman, they're sort of the same thing. It might sound a bit strange, but um, if you think about it, it's about not having these boundaries, moral boundaries, because they haven't grown up with a father who can act as, a, as an axis mundi, as a as an entity that connects heaven and earth, who provides a good moral framework for them to operate within. So if you don't have that rock to lean against, so you, the father, you are the rock they can lean against and see this is a correct moral path to take, this is a good decision, they can lean on you as 
the the high priest of the household this is how they did it in back in ancient Rome by the way that the father of the house the pater familias he was the he was in charge of the religion of the household and i think this is very appropriate for a man to have that that moral guidance inside of him and that will also yield um a nice shield, a rock, a security for the children and the wife, of course, that they can lean on him. So this leads us into the question, how to how to act as a man then? And for a man, a father, if you think about it, what is an optimal father? Yeah, it's someone who is calm, collected, confident, not someone who's prone to outbursts, someone who's knowledgeable, someone who knows the correct way. Someone who knows the way, simply put, and someone who does the right thing. So if you think of yourself a lot that what you do, how you act, how you are, that will directly impact the the type of man your daughter will find. Because it's usually the case, again, the, the type of man you are is likely uh, the type of man that you, your daughter will be drawn to. So you can decide for yourself. Uh, what kind of man do I want my daughter to be attracted to? Yeah, then you are that man yourself. Because if you look at, again, pattern recognition, you see that often, I'm not saying always, I'm not saying always in any of these situations, there are also women, uh, men and women who have grown up without a father, but they turn out all right. Plenty of exceptions, but the, the pattern of it, the pattern of it is that a woman growing up without a father or a weak father, she will have a a worse life outcome. This is a pattern, it's not every time I'm generalizing here. We need to do it when we talk about these matters. Same thing with a boy. I'm not saying that all men growing up without a father, I'm saying that there is a pattern and I'm saying that signal motherhood is is bad. So we can see that okay if the father isn't there it's bad. If the father is weak or unreliable or bad, yeah it's also bad. So then we know that we as fathers we need to be good men because that will increase the likelihood of a good life outcome for our for our daughters and sons of course so that being said the importance of a father to take care of himself to be completely in control of himself to not be prone to emotional outbursts anything like that easier said than done but it gets easier the older you get and the more experience you have easier with a second child by the way a lot of new learning experiences with a first child of course completely natural and you shouldn't beat yourself up if you if you get frustrated um, or irritated every once in a while but do try to you know subdue that urge and do try to be calm at all times and uh, yeah you will have that calming presence so a patient parent is a calm child so now we have reached the point of the video where i say the things i always say you can probably guess what i'm gonna say next and that is of course that you need to hit the iron you need to get as well trained as possible because if you see if you look at modern culture, if you look at a Hollywood production, the father is basically always portrayed as a slouch with a big belly and he is out of shape and he is uh, foolish and stupid and only interested in sitting at the sofa watching sports. So then you also know that this is something, this is the opposite of what you want to be. So if you are fit yourself, again, then your daughter will look at, okay, this is a, how a man is supposed to look like. and. You all know the holistic reasons. If you go to the gym, you take care of yourself. Comes with a whole host of positive health uh, benefits. So it's not only about looking uh, jacked, it's about everything, basically. You all know this is familiar to you because I've said it so many times before, the holistic nature of gym training or martial arts or similar matters. So anyway, if you look at these weak fathers, these foolish fathers, then it might also be the case that uh, a young girl, she's looking for uh, approval someplace else because she doesn't respect the father because he's a lazy slouch who doesn't have that drive. But if you are a uh, Patri familias with some gravitas, then she can look at you and say, okay, this is what a good man is. So very important for you as a father, and this is me speaking to myself, by the way, me speaking to myself, saying what my own goals and ambitions as a father of daughters might be. And that is to be a good man myself first. So I don't want to let myself go in any way. I want to be uh, uh, the axis mundi, the constant 
rock they can lean upon so they feel comfortable and at ease and they must of course always trust me and know that I'm a reliable man so therefore you can never be drunk for example you shouldn't drink alcohol anyway of course but I'm just saying that you shouldn't be ever be seen as unreliable so to recap my thoughts on this fine day your main mission is for your daughters for your daughter to become happy to find a good man she can be happy with to create a family and of course if you have a daughter who finds herself a good man that will also be good for their children in turn so she wants to find a man who will become a good father that is the key and then you also need to show because I know there is a lot on the internet discussions about women liking bad boys etc well, if they only have two options, a bad boy who is irresponsible, but he at least has some thumos. If that is being presented as one alternative, and then you have a dork, a dork who isn't capable of anything, yeah, then it's no wonder they will choose the, um, the bad boy. But then you have a third option, and that is to be uh, a stable pater familias, someone who is uh, a cultured thug, you can say, someone who is both stable and you know who possesses that primordial force within him so you need to hit the gym hard that is what I want to say and of course be responsible and uh, as sharp and as good in as many ways as possible and that will reflect upon you so if you're worried about the future which is normal to be by the way you should know that you can influence the future by your actions here in the now now on a last note how to behave with your girls i can only say how i behave with my girls at the moment and that is to be as loving kind cuddly as possible and give them a lot of compliments saying that they are my beautiful princesses and everything like that so you can be as loving as possible that's also very important because after all you want your um you want your son-in-law to become loving as well to uh, to their children and of course you should be you should be loving to your children uh, for your sons as well of course uh, simple stuff really and it's it comes quite natural to be loving and cuddly and kind and now lastly as I've said before view it as a learning experience everything and uh, yeah try to just get better and more calm and confident for each passing day and you will prosper as a father so good stuff good stuff thanks for watching do check out all the links in the description box below and i will see you in the next video xxo boom